Hey folks, so there's a new rich text editor called Lexcool that just hit the scene and I want to take a look at it. So this is a project by Facebook and from what I understand, they're already using it in production. And so that means they've got at least like a billion people <laughs> using this thing. So it's pretty far along, but this is a replacement for Draft.js. Now, if you've ever used Draft, it is complicated, not fun to use. And from what I understand, the people at Facebook didn't like using it, so they built this tool called Lexcool. So let's take a look at what we can do with Lexcool. So here's their playground. We've got this lovely little editor here, and you can see it really has everything you might want. We've got the ability to have headers. I can switch all this out. I can change the text or the font. Everything you'd really want. Now, this is a very traditional style, rich text editor where we have nodes and everything is, you know, this handles things very, very well. Now, this is a very promising project from what I can tell. Now, rich text editors, it's a really hard problem to solve. And I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. I've had some apps before that I've had to build that I ended up using other tools and they just <laughs> were not very pleasant to use. So what's really cool about this is it has out of the box support for things like mentions. Let's see what we got here. Admiral Terranold. So these are the types of things that traditionally you'll have to script for yourself, but when it works out of the box, it just works. And so I've just copied something from GitHub. Let's uh, see. Okay. Awesome. So in fact, we can see that the links are working. So it just has all sorts of cool stuff here. Yeah. Let's get into the concepts. So if you're not too familiar with rich text editing, the way that they tend to work is they use different nodes. So in this case, we've got five different types of base nodes. Now you can extend a few of them, but every document is going to be first comprised of the root node, which is just the whole document itself. And interestingly, they've got line break nodes. So whenever there's going to be a new line, they've got a specific node type for this. And then we've got element nodes for things like paragraphs, text nodes for actual strings of text, and decorator nodes for anything else like videos or embeds like that. And the thing is, as you're working with a tool like this, you'll oftentimes take something like a text node or an element node and you'll extend it. So you'll take the space, you'll customize the way that it functions, and you'll start using those throughout your editor. And the other thing to understand about rich text editors is they tend to be command-based, which makes it really easy to make it extensible. So instead of having to directly edit the state, you're able to create these commands. So for instance, when I go back to one of these buttons here, if I want to make this bold, I don't have to manually go through when I'm programming this and writing the state. Instead, what I'm doing is essentially I'm dispatching a command that contains the context and that command will then do you know, the operation that I want it to do. Very cool. And I actually just noticed there's comments too. Wow, that is awesome. Okay, so what does this actually look like behind the scenes? So they've got kind of an example here that looks similar. It's not quite as full-fledged as that playground, but here we go. We've got, in this case, a React app, and we're just importing this uh, editor component over here. All we're doing here is using this Lexical Composer, which is, I guess, the top level kind of object here. And then it's merging together all of these different plugins. Now, most text editors are plugin-based, which makes it, again, very easy to you know, extend. What seems to be pretty unique to Lexical is that the elements or the plugins are just React components. What that means is we're not having to kind of merge stuff together, which was something that when I was working with Slate before, I had to do a ton of, which was frustrating. Seemingly very cool. And the other thing that's pretty interesting is they've got this theme. Now, if we go to the themes page, what's cool is if you want to style anything in here, essentially what you can do is you can define what the class for a given element type is. So for an H1, we're going to use this editor heading H1. And so if I was to go through here, let's make a large heading H1. What I could do is go to my style.css and find that editor H1. And let's say I want to make this font something else. I don't know if Georgia is actually going to work. Oh, okay. Awesome. I don't know if that is Georgia, but that is some sort of serif font. So definitely uh, works. But if I go back to, let's say an H2, this should be, yeah, whatever that is. Cool. Alrighty. Now, the one thing to be mindful of is Lexical is very new. Like if you look at the uh, commit dates here, this project, yeah, looks to have started about three months ago. It probably started earlier than that. And this was just when it was made public, but still a lot is going to change. In fact, they warn you, Lexical is currently in early development and APIs and packages are likely to change quite often. So I think this is one of those things to stay aware of, like start and GitHub watches it adjust. But if you're starting a project today, I think that you might want to hold off on Lexical until it gets a little bit more stable. Now, the kind of competitors to this are naturally Draft.js, which Lexical is just going to destroy. 
A Draft.js was fine. It was one of the first React-based text editors. I think it was made in like 2016. So a lot has changed since then. But there's some other popular ones like Prose Mirror. And this is one that powers a lot of really cool sites. I think even like Atlassian is using this. So again, this is one that you can do a lot of cool stuff with, but Prose Mirror tends to be quite complicated. And so there is this awesome project called TipTap, which is still in beta, but this is basically added on top of Prose Mirror and has built it in a, what they're calling a headless way. So they're not doing any sort of styling or anything. You can really use this however you want. But as you can see, it has stuff like real-time users or collaborative text out of the box here. So we've got other people here and I can do whatever I want. You know, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, pretty awesome. And this one, what's interesting is, again, this one also uses kind of an extension plugin system, but they've got a ton of really cool plugins out of the box. Collaboration, document models, all that good stuff. And finally, another one is Slate. Now, this is one that I used on a project and gotta say, Slate is, well, it works pretty well, but it's a bit frustrating to work with until you get the hang of it. So definitely uh, check out all those, compare what's best. Personally, if it were me, for the time being, I would use TipTap, but that is just me. So that was just a quick look at Lexical. Yeah, cool project. So I will see you in the next one.